Hey guys, Patrick Sussums here with Do South Outfitters, fly shop and guide service of Boone in Banner Rock, North Carolina. Today on the Educated Angler, we wanted to answer a couple questions that we were receiving in the comments. One of the most asked questions we've been receiving is to do an explanation or synopsis on fly rods. So today we thought we'd take a minute to talk about the breakdown of fly rods that we use as trout fishing guides and professionals in Western North Carolina. I want to preface this video with this. There's tons of rod manufacturers. There's really no standard, if you will, um, to some of the information we're going to talk about. So there's a horde of information out there to really geek out on, but we want to give just a really basic rundown on what the weight system means and what rods we fish in our area and also why. So let's go ahead and get started. Fly rods range in size from basically a zero or one weight, which is the lightest rod on the market, up to about a 15 weight, which would be the heaviest. On those light rods, you're gonna catch really small fish or you know, uh, target on, we'll say, wild small trout, all the way up to your heavy rods, you could catch marlin. This weight system I'm referring to, the weight of a rod is determined by the line that is paired with the rod. Now, there are uh, charts that the AFFTA, which is the American Fly Fishing Trade Association, have made to determine what a line weight consists of. It's usually measured in the first 30 feet of your fly line, and it's basically measured in either grams or grains. And it'll outline, say you have a five weight, that correlates to 140 grain line in the first 30 feet of that line. So, nonetheless, there's a great resource on the AFTA website that shows these charts, so you can check that out. We'll put a link in the video to check those charts out to get a better understanding of what line weights mean. But the rod weight corresponds or should correspond to your line weight, more or less. There are some rods that people will overline or underline due to the feel of the rod, but for all general purposes, your line and your rod typically should match in weight. We want to take a second and kind of break down where you might use various weights of rods, what applications they pertain to. So let's look at this, guys. Here I've broken down into to four sections. We have zero to three weights, four to six, seven and eight, and then nine to 15 plus. So let's talk about the applications of each, each of these kind of sections of rods. So on our zero to three weights, and I'm speaking in general terms here, guys, they're definitely unique rods that are used for unique types of fishing. For example, European style nymphing that may not cross over correctly, but for all general purpose, let's talk about these. Normally on a zero to three weight, it's gonna be light trout application, pan fish, things of those nature. So small stream, light trout fishing, pan fishing, things like that. The four to six for the freshwater game, at least where we live, I would say this is kind of our Swiss Army knife. You can kind of do anything with this range of rod, the four to six foot or six weight range. Um, you know, we can nymph fish for trout, throw dries, you can streamer fish, light streamer fishing. And you can catch, you know, trout, smallmouth, light bass work, things like that on a four to six weight. Generally, we're using these on kind of like mid-level streams, you know, anywhere from a mid-sized stream up to, we'll say a little larger tailwater. Seven to eight weights, we're generally streamer fishing with these guys. You can streamer fish for all kinds of fish in our area, predominantly bass and trout. And then we've got the nine to 15 plus, they make huge rods. You know, mean catch marlin and sailfish on fly rods. And this is gonna be for game fish, both freshwater and saltwater, anything from musky to marlin. And you'll basically pair the weight of the rod with the size of the fish you're trying to catch or the size of the fly you're trying to throw as well. But hopefully this sheds a little light on kind of the breakdown of sizes of rods. In our area, if you stick to this kind of four to six weight range, you'll be fine. There are some guys, like I was saying earlier, that are really big into the European nymphing style game that are using lightweight two to three weights to fish for trout predominantly, so they kind of fall into this category. That's a whole different animal, but we're speaking in broad strokes here. If you're in this four to six range, you're gonna be just fine for fishing in our area. So as I was saying earlier, we're typically using between a four to six weight fly rod in our area. I'm usually fishing between an eight footer 
in a nine footer. I'm generally using these four weights in small streams. So I use like an eight foot four weight to fish small headwater streams. A lot of folks would say, why wouldn't you use a smaller rod? You know, your rivers are really tight. The reason I like the eight footer is it gives me a little more reach to high stick fish whenever I'm dry dropper fishing or nymphing. I'll also use a nine foot four weight quite a bit on our tailwaters. I like the 9.4 as a dry fly rod. One thing the 9 foot 4 weight will lack is the capability to effectively throw streamers. So on the 4 weight, it's definitely more of the light duty rod of the 4, 5, and 6. However, it does have its applications in small streams and dry fly fishing or light nymph rig fishing on the tailwaters or mid-level streams, I should say. A 5 weight, this is more of your Swiss Army knife, kind of do anything. The 5, we're gonna fish it usually in either an eight foot six to a nine foot range. I personally like a nine foot five weight. I think it's kind of the jack of all trades. The deal with the five is this, it excels a little more than the four at throwing heavier bugs, heavier rigs, and streamers. At the same time, you can still throw a really nice dry fly presentation with a five weight. So in our area, I would highly recommend a, five, a nine foot five weight. And like I said, it's a real crossover rod. You can, you can streamer fish, you can dry fly, or nymph fish with this guy. The five might be a little overkill on our small streams. If I was fishing a tiny stream, I'm gonna dial it back and fish a four. So the six weight. In our area, we don't fish a ton of six weights. Um, a lot of guys like to streamer fish with a six weight. They, they use it as predominantly a light streamer fishing rod. I find it personally to be a little bit of an overkill on a dry fly rod and nymph rod. Once again, this is tailored fit to the Appalachian region. So uh, out west, I know a lot of guys trout fish all the time with six weights. We don't have quite as much wind. We don't have quite as much of a long cast. So most people are doing light streamer fishing with six weights in our area. More than likely, most situations, the six will be a little heavy for what we're doing in our area. But four, five, and six, either way, if you have one of these or two of these, you should be good to go. You can never have too many rods. But, uh, you know, if I had to choose one rod, say I was stranded on an island and I had to catch a trout with it in our area, <laughs> I'm going to go with a, probably a 9.5. It's kind of the jack of all trades. Hopefully this information has helped, guys. Uh, we really appreciate you tuning in to The Educated Angler. Uh, if you guys have any questions or comments, definitely let us know. We're all ears. We're always trying to learn and evolve and kind of better our, our video series. Also, what we've mentioned today, we've talked in really broad strokes. So every rod manufacturer has their own kind of niche. Um, and there's also niche rods for niche types, types of fishing. Some of those we're going to go over in future videos. But for a general sense of fishing in our area, hopefully this helps you guys out and gives you an idea of what to look for as you walk into buying rods and getting into the sport. Thank you so much for your time. And until next time, tight lines, guys.